Hello and welcome to another video by Security Guide. This time we will be covering the uh, Avtex KPD674 DVR. This is a four channel system. Uh, it comes. You can get them from Avtech with uh, 8 and 16 channels with various options such as DVD drives but today we will be focusing on the 4 channel KPD674. This DVR comes with uh, H.264 compression again as like all these uh, modern DVRs do. H.264 if you've not watched any of the previous videos is a new compression for the video that doesn't sacrifice quality and increases time compared to uh, other DVR recording facilities such as uh, MJPEG. You get a lot longer and a lot better. This DVR can be used with a USB mouse which is what I'll be using today. However, the one doesn't come in the box with this DVR but it does support USB mice. It also comes with an infrared remote control so you can use it as a uh, you can use it from a distance so that can be also very useful for you as well as you can use the front panel for uh, viewing and operating the DVR. However, I would suggest using a mouse again because it's a lot easier. Okay, moving on to video outputs, we have VGA and BNC. Now, VGA being the better because it can carry higher resolution than the BNC, but they both duplicate each other, so you can use them, that's not a problem. Uh, with regards to inputs, we have uh, BNC video inputs for the cameras, and on this DVR we have phono inputs, four of them, so you can have up to four microphones and four video inputs, well, obviously with the video inputs being at four channel, uh, they use phono. Uh, for the audio out, we it does use uh, Phono RCA for video output as well, which is different to a lot of DVRs use uh, BNC output as well as BNC input for audio. With regards to USB inputs, we have a dedicated mouse USB input and also another USB input for a USB drive. Now again, this DVR only supports FAT32, so you must format it in FAT32. You can't use NCFS or FAT16 as these will be incompatible and there's a good chance the DVR won't even detect it. Uh, moving swiftly on with the power supply that comes with this DVR, it's a 19 volt. Now what you've got to be careful is that this is a problem we've come across before, is that people who buy a DVR package with cameras um, come across the problem that they get confused as to which power supply they should use. They pick up the uh, DVR power supply which is 19 volts and they pick up the camera power supply which is usually 12 volts. Now using 19 volts on a 12 volt camera can potentially damage them as well as underpowering a DVR which can also damage the DVR now we send out labels whenever we do this so you get a good notice and you'll be told in it before you actually set it up that the what the consequences can be if you get them mixed up now uh, usually the, the power supply comes with the DVR so it's not confusing uh, just be, like I say be careful so you don't have any comebacks it's a very simple mistake to make okay moving on to the menu we uh, just simply all I have to do is move the mouse and it'll come up with the login pad now if you notice at the top there is a padlock picture now this means that it comes up there if you highlight it that the actual DVR is locked now as soon as I put the password in which is four zeros by default press enter it does change so that you know and you can actually click that and lock it up again now with these DVRs they've got a new revision on the later firmware where you can have a little control panel at the side that's helpful for quick options but uh, I'm going to show you first of all the menu okay so we start off with this menu now the graphical user interface is more basic than the last ones uh, we've done on security guide however it does not decrease functionality still I got massive functionality on this DVR moving on to the first section of the menu which is labeled quick start we go into this and it bring up the option of uh, channel ch channel title so that shows each channel and the title above it now you can change that to turn it off you can turn event status off you can even turn the date off however for legal reasons a lot of people keep them on so moving on to the record configuration it'll show you the channels you can change it by channel you change it to by channel it'll show all channels and their settings so you can change the image quality to SIF field or frame okay so if we change this now we can change the image size down from SIF between field and frame now frame is the equivalent to D1 it's just what Avtech call uh, this is what they call D1 frame is very very much the same thing okay now we feel that runs at uh, half D1 so let's change the options a little bit so if we change it to frame we only get 6.25 IPS per channel now 6.25 is uh, the amount of uh, images per second. Images per second is also the same as frames per second. It's just different uh, uh, manufacturers of DVRs change them around a little bit, that's all. 
So let's say we can change all of them down to a frame and it will run at 6.25 images per second or frames per second. If we change it to field, that's half D1, 12.50 frames per second. So for what you're using it for, you really need to make a balance between them all. And then you can change the quality between super best, best, high and normal. Okay, so we'll just leave them at super best. And then moving on, you can change it to event. This will help events. Now, at IPS, it says there 100. Now, that's 100 across all channels. If you go by channel, it'll change it to 25. And, of course, 425 is equals 100. And, like I say, that can be changed for uh, events. You can change it between, uh, say, on manual record. You could have it on uh, field. And then on uh, event, you could have it on SIF. As well as time. And this is, like I say, this is just this is timed settings so you really get a lot of variation for the image recordings on these okay so moving back now we'll go back into that uh, we want to exit without saving and then on the left we have see here where it's highlighted this is different tabs now this can be confusing if you've used different DVRs with different layouts so anyway moving on we'll go on to time setup and then of course you can set the time and date uh, you should only really do this if they're incorrect so let's change that you can change the date and you can select the date the numbers and the year and whatnot and then there change the time okay so let's exit them moving back onto the main menu we now have date setup so let's go on to date setup and now this is the configuration for the format so it's display mode it's got text uh, which can't be changed on this one you've got the format which is day month year now the American US one is month day year and with Eastern it's year month day. Okay, so we'll leave it a day month year seen as it's European. On the left we can move down the tab onto daylight. Now these are daylight savings and uh, these can be, it actually states when they get changed and you can adjust it by an, an hour. Uh, well with uh, EU it's, it is an hour so we'll leave it as that. Now I've got this one selected to off so it's changed manually on mine. Uh, moving back to the main menu we'll just move back there okay so with the next tab we have system onto that icon there it just load up a little bit now the first one we have is english now this can be changed between uh, english uh, french it's got a fair few different languages installed on it which is very helpful if you're exporting these dvrs uh we also have admin password setup that's uh, changing the password you have to put old and then new in that's helpful but you really want to do that because you get the DVR with the basic password you don't want anyone unwanted having a good look at your, your recordings and uh, deleting them and cha making changes okay so the operator password as well that's uh, new you have to put the new and old in uh, this is the upgrade section it asked me it asked me to plug in the USB but you got to do it it gives you a 30 second countdown before it will just exit and go back onto the previous screen uh, that's for doing firmware updates. Now, like I say, you shouldn't really do a firmware update unless you have a bug in the system. That's what firmware's for. You shouldn't really update them unnecessarily because if it's done improperly, it can potentially break the DVR. Okay. Now we go into the backup configuration. This will give us uh, a backup of the configuration file for the DVR. So the all your settings and individual color modes and everything can be saved. So that's good for you, as well as a, a restore configuration, you can restore a configuration onto the uh, actual DVR. Moving on to the next tab, we have the system information. Now this is good, it has the baud rate, which is uh, can be changed. Over here on the right, it has host ID, which is, that's set to nothing as default. Automatic key lock, that's actually, uh, that's a very useful um, little icon. That's 30 seconds go by, and then it will lock up the uh, DVR again. Now this is also an option that a lot of people use over time is to clean the hard drive. That's just to f essentially format it. However, Avtech prefer to say clean rather than format to keep it a bit more user friendly. You can also reset the DVR to defaults through uh, the reset to default configuration there. Uh, you've got the remote control ID, that's for setting up the uh, infrared remote control. Uh, and then at the bottom here we have uh, what serial it uses. Now this is RS485, not uh, 232. That's for a joypad. The video format on this DVR by default is PAL because we're European, so uh, other people of different region, i.e. US, they'll get a NTSC. Uh, it also has the version number at the bottom here. This is very useful if you do want to upgrade the firmware. Okay, and moving on onto the next tab on the left, we've got USB backup. Now this works as you can just select the date, start time, and end time that you want to, buy, you want to back up. So say I want to back up two hours. 
I'd say uh, find the start time two hours later the end time and you can choose to back up whether you want ch want channel one two and three or four or you want them all together just two and three there's so many different alter alterations you can actually perform there it'll ask you what hard disks as well now it'll say all HD HDD now that's for with the four channel you can only get one hard drive uh, in the DVR but because they use the firmware on the 798 and 796 which is extremely uh, similar you can put more than one hard drive in those ones anyway let's stick to the four channel configuration so far then of course you go to backup okay uh, then just go to submit uh, the, and the required size and at the bottom it'll give you a message saying no USB device is fitted as I haven't fitted one so moving back to the main menu okay so going on to advanced configuration I'll go to this tab next so we'll uh, enter that part of the menu as you can see it does bring up the advanced configuration we are actually on the camera tab on the left you can see that then on this side we have channel 1, 2, 3 and 4 showing separate settings for each channel now I'll show you here we have brightness, contrast, saturation and hue now these are the display properties of each camera so let's choose cam ca camera 1 and uh, select that and we can actually change the brightness we can make it brighter or darker but for now I think we'll leave it on default of uh, 128 so let's exit that and it'll bring us back here and you can do this for each channel three, 2, 3 and 4 as well uh, as well as the hue, yep yeah, that can be altered as well as saturation and contrast okay now it also has uh, another option that Avtech have brought in now with uh, these DVRs with the they do it with the 674 the 796 and the 798 uh, I'm aware of that they do it with these and it's the option for covert now with covert for this channel is actually currently selected to off so let's enable that slap that onto one and we'll notice that channel one has seemingly disappeared from the actual display the live playback however it is actually still recording to the hard drive and will still uh, be shown on playback however it's just for live that you can't view and this is good if you need a display but you don't want people to see what you're recording okay so let's knock that back to default which is off and uh, you can actually choose to record that and um, select the record to off uh, or on Either, either way and what it'll do is it'll still display it live but won't record it to the hard drive it'll just leave that one blank on the hard drive you can also edit the channel title that's uh, an easy option to do just click edit and you can change the title like I say this is available for 2, 3 and 4 as well so moving on uh, we'll change the tab from camera to detection now this again will show ch uh, channel 1, 2, 3 and 4 on uh, individual settings so you can change them all so you could have uh, say channel 1 and 2 they could be on constant recording 3 and 4 can be set to motion as you can see here we've got the motion settings that can be changed to on and off and alarm on and off and you can actually edit the area of sensitivity now the red zone is essentially a dead zone the place that's clear so we can change that uh, alter, the, alter all these squares and whatnot. The like I say the red zone is a dead zone so let's come out of that and just leave that as is uh, we can move on to channel 2, 3 and 4, you can do that with them as well. Moving on to the next tab which is alert, this brings up options for different alerts. Now the actual DVR has a physical buzzer inside and it can uh, you can actually change what it will buzz for. So we've got motion detection, that will start beeping if uh, something's motion detected. However if there's constant motion it will you'll end up with constant beeping. So you will uh, want to turn that off eventually if uh, you are actually recording somewhere with constant motion. Down here we are at the bottom after all these options what you can have them for including the HDD. It says alarm duration that means it will beep for 10 seconds before it stops beeping for the next alert or whenever it's next interrupted. The heat hard drive nearly full that's gigabytes so 5 gigabytes before the end it will start beeping so you should tell you that it's almost full. Now if you've got it on uh, can overwrite so that when it gets to the end it starts from the beginning again you don't want to hear it beeping every so often that will uh, it could I could definitely see that getting uh, on your nerves so anyway moving on to the next one which is network uh, 